How does um, God amaze you today? Again, I'm Catholic. Uh, I chose Catholic. And one of, one of the reasons I chose Catholic was the sacred heart of Jesus. Um, from St. Gertrude the Great to St. Margaret Mary to the Gospel of Luke chapter 15 and the prodigal son and the lost sheep and the lost coin, the, um, the overwhelming love of God and how little I think we're able to comprehend that. Mm. Every once in a while, maybe you have one of those moments where it, you at least begin to go. Um, but that to me is, is what's amazing is that at the center of the universe and actually what holds everything of all creation together is that divine love. If God withdraws that, it's not that the universe blows up and the universe just disappears it just because it's the love that's kind of holding it all together. And yet that same love is applied um, exponentially and overwhelmingly to to you and to me as people made in his image. That that to me is what amazes me. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but that's... Yeah, very much so. That's where I'm at. You talk about like that love being withdrawn. Um, and for some reason, what flashed into my mind is... Uh, I, I think so many people are experience that with their parents of that love being withdrawn mm. Um, mm. and, and it can shatter their lives. Um, mm. How do you see the parentlessness that our society is experiencing, particularly the fatherlessness mm. in relation to people's inability to ponder the love of God or experience the love of God or be exposed to the love of God? Whew, that's a good one, man. Um, yeah, the the decline of the American father is um, probably the great tragedy of the 20th and 21st centuries. Um, and I mean, you know, the statistics as well are better than I do. I mean, that you go to the when you go to the prison, <clears throat> the the greatest predictor is is an absent father. Um, and when you grow up in a chaotic, I mean. I, I love single moms and the heroic work that they do, but kids need a dad and a mom. One person is just not able to do both of those. Uh, it's, it's asking too much. No human being can be both. I mean, if the mom tends to maybe nurture and keep in the nest more than the dad, I mean, again, that's the generalization, but the dad tends to kind of push out and, and and get the kids to try to spread their wings and become an, so, there's, so there's a healthy tension there between nurture and um, adventure and uh, that kind of thing. Um, and so if you grow up in a more chaotic, less stable setting, and you've experienced part of parental love, but not all of parental love, and you're exposed to things um, because you don't have two engaged parents in your life, a lot of your life becomes more, um, you're not really able to, first of all, you're not, if you haven't really experienced love, the idea of a loving God is almost like a foreign language. Mm. And you're also having to um, deal, you're, you're facing more dangers, you're facing more hurdles in your life. And it's very, I mean, so your life becomes much more of a survival um, contest. Uh, than a thriving contest. I mean, I, I think about something that Father Mike, our mutual friend, said in a in a talk. I, I don't even remember if I was there or if I watched it on YouTube or something. He said, you know, the um, the millennial generation was defined by um, they they kind of came to the conclusion life is hard, and the next generation, I think he calls them the I generation, is instead saying, is it worth it? Mm. There's, a, there's almost like a despair. And I think a lot of that is because of that fatherlessness and life is so challenging because economically you're disadvantaged, educationally you tend to be disadvantaged, you're exposed to more dangers. Uh, it, be, it does, it becomes more of a survival of the fittest Lord of the flies kind of thing, I mean, to exaggerate a bit. But there's, there's less stability in your life. And I think the greatest gift my dad gave me, I mean, my dad was not um, a high curb appeal kind of guy. You know, he didn't have, uh, he, he hated speaking period, let alone speaking in public. Uh, he was an accountant. He was very quiet, very reserved. Um, oftentimes you would never even know he was in the room. But the greatest gift he gave me was 
the consistency, the steadiness, the stability. I knew every single day he was going to come home from work. Yeah. Every day. At 5.30, he was going to walk through that door. He wasn't going to be drunk. He wasn't going to be angry. He wasn't going to be violent. And he wasn't going to not show up. And I didn't really appreciate that until I got to be about 18 you know, or 17, 18 in, in high school and college. I started to encounter people that didn't have that kind of stability that, that gives you a home base that you know you can count on because then you're able to kind of go out and explore the world and explore your own gifts and explore things for yourself as opposed to the whole world just sort of being chaotic to you. So that gift of predictability, consistency, stability was an incredible gift that he gave me that I didn't appreciate till a lot later. When we talk about these things, and it could be this issue, it could be 20 other issues. You know, one of the things I've noticed is that um, people get uncomfortable, people get defensive, people get in a place if if they are affected by what you're talking about right mm-hmm. now, you know. Mm-hmm. So if there's someone watching and they are divorced mm-hmm. and they are raising their children mm-hmm. and maybe solo because there's an addict or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, it's hard for them to hear what yep. you're saying. Totally agree. Because it it has deep and, and sometimes heartbreaking implications for their life. Mm-hmm. Um, how do we develop in people the, the maturity to be able to say, hey, my situation is is broken, mm-hmm. um, either through my own fault or someone else's fault, but I can still see that that is, that is the best way. Mm-hmm. Um, do you know what I'm talking about? I do. I do. Um, and, I mean, it's not like um, an absent father is a new, a new invention. I mean, there were a lot of dads that didn't come home from World War II. So you had a lot of women who found themselves at the end of World War II as single moms. Um, so it doesn't mean it can't be done. It doesn't mean that, uh, it can't be done heroically and well, it means it's harder. Mm. Um, and it means that the, um, statistically it's going to be more challenging. The, stati- the, the probability is not zero, but wouldn't we all prefer to go for the probability of 80, 90% positive outcome than the, than the 50, 60% prob- uh, probability of a positive outcome. Um, so I, I think to be secure in who we are and say, this is the circumstances that I've got, um, whether I'm divorced or my husband was tragically killed or my husband um, went AWOL or what have you, or, or your wife for that matter, um, that this is the circumstances I've got and I'm going to maximize those circumstances. But my hope for my children is that they'll have this because it's going to be a need. I mean, we, we have always wanted our children to have it better than we have. Uh, and so let me help my kids be prepared so that they'll have a easier path of this than I've had. Mm. Um, and so their, their probability may be 50, 60, 70%. I want to set them up so they realize, Hey, if you do this, uh, your probability, the probability of your kids having a, a little better life than you've had is 80, 90%. Mm. Um, so yeah, I mean, we have to accept we are, we're, we're it's life is messy. Yeah. We, we are broken, imperfect people. Um, and so things happen uh, at the same time. It doesn't mean you say, okay, anything goes and we're going to pretend like all of these produce the same outcomes because they don't. So let's at least aim for the, to, for the, for the bullseye and hopefully at least hit the target. Let's don't just sort of shoot the arrow and let it go wherever it goes. Yeah. 